What is the best timing if you are trying to conceive? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OB-GYN and REI. So I'm a fertility doctor and every single day I talk about tips to help you get pregnant, stay pregnant, or understand your body the best. Today I'm going to talk about timing and our course when you're trying to get pregnant because there's a lot of myths out there and a lot of things that people don't necessarily understand and I want to break it all down for you. But first, just a huge thanks and show of love. This channel is growing so much and I just owe it all to you. Also, if you didn't see, if you don't follow over on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD, I recently got a book deal, which is something I've been trying for for years. So I have been really wanting to make a fertility book that is empowering and helping you understand your body, but also what you can do about it. And for so long, I've heard no from so many people. So I'm so excited that Penguin Random House has signed and the book is going to happen. It's called Balancing Act and I can't wait to share. I will share some of my behind the scenes journey because it's not been linear with you as we keep going. But I just want to say follow along for updates over on IG and here. And just thank you guys for supporting, for following, because that has shown all these big fancy agents and editors that you care about your body and your health and you want to know more. Because for so long, I heard that nobody really cares about their fertility, that it's too scary, too hard of a topic, and you helped prove me right and show them that we do care. So huge thank you. All right. So when it comes to timing intercourse, number one, it doesn't have to be hard. You don't have to do too much. That's really honest. A lot of this depends on what's your normal sex life and what you want to do. So number one. You need to know when you're ovulating or that you are ovulating. How do you know if you're ovulating? You can tell that you're ovulating because you have a regular predictable cycle. If your period is coming at a regular predictable interval, you are ovulating, okay? So number one, if you have a regular cycle, you should track it. You know that it's coming. If you're having sex two to three times per week, you're putting sperm there because an egg lives for 24 hours, but sperm live for five days. So if you are having sex every two to three days during your cycle, you're putting enough sperm there close enough to when you ovulate and you don't have to overthink it. Similarly, if you have sex every day or every other day on the regular, keep on keeping on. Too often, I see that people try to have less sex and save up the sperm. And this is something I recently talked about when I was a guest on the Diary of a CEO podcast is that the body doesn't work that way. You, if you're a man or your male partner or somebody who has testes, is making sperm every single day. It's crazy. Hundreds of millions every day, 1,500 a second. So what is happening is if you don't ejaculate out sperm, they're dying. They can't just live in the ejaculatory tract for that long. They become debris. And obstruction. And the analogy I always think about is if you have a highway and you have a lot of stalled cars and accidents, even the sperm that can do the job and are normal can't get to where they need to go the fastest. So if you are saving up in anticipation of ovulation, that's not a good idea for the vast majority of people. Very few exceptions. If you get a semen analysis, you have low volume. For some reason, some patients, I do tell them to abstain four to seven days. But that is the exception, not the rule. So you shouldn't be saving up for ovulation thinking that that is going to give you a higher chance of conceiving. Because honestly, if you're just putting sperm there every day, you're getting sperm there ready for the egg for whenever you ovulate. 24 hours is not a long period of time. You also don't have to track your cycle that intensely. I do think you should know that you ovulate and know that your periods come at a regular interval because if it's irregular, that could mean something's wrong. If you want to track, you can. So how do you track? There is the calendar method. There is ovulation predictor kits. There is cervical mucus, and there's basal body temperature. These are methods for you to try to predict intercourse. And let's be real. Most people are not intercourse every day or every other day people. That's just real life. So if I'm asking you to have sex every single day, and that's not a part of your world, you may burn out and not be ready when that egg has its 24-hour moment. 
So it's important for us, especially for people who aren't frequently having intercourse, to think about when is going to have the best time. And we still need to be clearing the pipes because we don't want to have a bunch of dead sperm. But the way that we can time this is by trying to gauge that time of ovulation the best. So if you have regular predictable cycles, your cycle is divided into two parts. The first part called the follicular phase. This is when a follicle is growing. A follicle is what an egg lives inside. After that follicle ruptures and the egg is released, that's called ovulation, that follicle reforms and becomes a corpus luteum. And the corpus luteum makes progesterone. And that's the luteal phase. So the first half of the cycle, follicular phase, growing an egg, making estrogen. Second half after ovulation, now you have a corpus luteum making progesterone. The luteal phase, a corpus luteum only lives for two weeks unless you get pregnant. If you get pregnant, your body will stimulate that corpus luteum. The HCG from the pregnancy will stimulate that corpus luteum to keep working and keep making more. But if you're not pregnant, which most months of your life you won't be, that corpus luteum will die after two weeks, your progesterone will drop, and you'll get a period. So if you're trying the simplest, cheapest, easiest way to know when you ovulate, take your cycle length, subtract it by 14 days. And the follicular phase can vary. So if I'm trying to decide the day of ovulation and my cycles are 34 days in length on average, I'm going to take 34 minus 14, and now I'm going to have 20. I ovulate on cycle day 20. That means that's going to be the top day and the five days before that because sperm lives for five days. So that would be the five to six day interval to try to really target. And so if you kind of pick that week out and that's your go week, that's going to be successful for you most of the time. You can see how that's really different if your periods are 24 days apart because 24 minus 14 is 10. So that's why your cycle length really does impact when you ovulate. And so a standard, everybody ovulates on day 14. In both of these cases, day 14 would have been the wrong day. And if that's the one day you chose to have sex, you wouldn't get pregnant. Now, if you like a more exact art, one thing you can do is check your cervical mucus. This is also a free method. You can put your fingers inside, pull out the cervical mucus, and you have to stretch it between your fingers and see if it's egg, white, sticky, stretchy. It is supposed to be that way the day of ovulation. Because ovulation, you know, might span two days, you know, when your 24 hours is, it could happen for two days. But when you see the sticky, stretchy egg white, go time. So that's pretty cheap and easy. Important, it's not what you see on the outside, not what you see in your underwear. Fingers up inside, try to grab by your cervix, pull it out, stretch it. Now we have OPK. So if you're really a tracker, this is my favorite. I'm a data nerd though, doesn't mean you have to be. An ovulation predictor kit test is a test that you pee on. It's a urinary measurement for LH or luteinizing hormone. LH is the hormone released from the brain that causes you to ovulate. So LH peaks before you ovulate. So it's usually the day before you ovulate, you're gonna see the LH surge. So that is a helpful method to know, oh, this is the day before I ovulate and tomorrow is the day I'm gonna ovulate. Importantly, if you use OPKs, and I have a whole video on them, you should use them the same time every day, and I recommend between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. I do not recommend first thing in the morning, even though the box says that. And once you get a positive, no more. You don't need to keep checking. LH is gonna rise and fall the entire luteal phase. So it really goes from nothing, a surge, and then it's gonna go up and down and up and down. Once you get the positive, you're gonna time intercourse that day, the next day. And then you have basal body temp, which basal body temp is a very interesting one because it's not helping you in that cycle in that moment. It's a way to confirm that you ovulate. So after you ovulate, the production of progesterone raises your core body temperature. So now your core body temperature is gonna be a half to a whole degree higher. So you have to use a very special thermometer. I also have a video on this one. Track your BBT specifically, but once it has raised, that typically happens about three days after ovulation. So you can confirm, hey, I did ovulate when I think I did. And that will help you if your cycles are regular in the next month, predict when to have intercourse the next time. I think, however, if you know when you ovulate by OPK or cervical mucus or just the calendar method and your BBT is confirming any of those, you don't need to consistently check it because it can be time consuming, 
confusing, anxiety provoking. And again, it's late. So if you didn't have sex and you missed it, I don't know that that helps you in that moment. But again, don't abstain too long. Don't save up sperm thinking that that's going to be better, just waiting for the best day. Understand your cycles. If they're regular, that's the best. Your fertile window, those five days before and the day of ovulation. So think about the luteal phase and calculate when that might be. And that's going to be your target zone. So you can target intercourse in that zone or all the time, every day, every other day. If that is what's a part of your relationship, please don't have less. Hope this helped you understand a little bit of the timing. Remember that even at our peak fertility, when we're really young, 30 and less, we see about a 20 to 25% chance of success per month. That means it's not going to happen the first time for everybody. But it also means most people will get pregnant at six months. By one year of trying, if you are not pregnant and you have regular predictable cycles, it's important for you to get an evaluation. That is the definition of infertility. We recommend people get an evaluation at six months trying if you're age 35 or zero to three months trying if you're 40. That way we can just know problems sooner. Hope this video helped. Ask any questions you have below about trying to get pregnant. As always, you can get more information on the As A Woman podcast or follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks, friends.